Pull to refresh. How to load data using a pull to refresh indicator. We have a list of items that we display inside a list view. Around the list view we wrap a refresh indicator. And inside the refresh method we put the new items data to some new values. With this, if you pull to refresh, then the refresh method is called and the new items are loaded. Alternatively, you could use the HTTP package to load the new items from a server. If the server response is successful, then we get from the response body the new items. And then we replace the items by the new items. Let's also go to this URL. Here you see that we get a list of data and every time we get then individual items, in our case we want to access only the ID of each item. Therefore we simply map over our items and from each item we extract the ID and then we return an item with this number. If we pull to refresh now, the new items are loaded from the server. Optionally you can remove the current items before every request. And while the items are cleared, we show a loading indicator. With this, a loading indicator is displayed until the new items are loaded. Infinite scrolling. How to create an infinite scrolling list view that fetches more data using HTTP. We have a list of 15 items that we display inside of a list view. Once we reach the bottom of the list, then we want to load more data. Simply add one more item to the list view. If it is not the last item, then we display our normal items. And if it is the last item that we have now added, then we show a loading indicator. As a result, if we scroll down, the last item is this loading indicator. Next, we add to the list view a controller that we create within the state. Within the init state, we listen to this scroll controller and check if we have reached the end of the list. If this is the case, then we want to fetch some more data from the server. So in our case, we add some more items to the end of the list. With this, if you reach the end of the list, then the new items are appended to our list. Also make sure to dispose the scroll controller in case it is not needed anymore. Next, you could use the HTTP package to load some items from the server. If the response is successful, then we get from the response body the new items which we simply add to our current items list. Let's also go to this website. From this URL we load a list of items. Each item that we load we are only interested in the ID for now. Therefore let's map over our items. From each item we extract the ID and return a text item with this number. With this if we reach the end of the list then we load 100 items from the server. Next, we want to make sure that we only load 25 posts from our server. Next to the limit, you can normally define a page. If it is a page 1, we load the first 25 items. If it is the second page, then we load 25 more items and so on. To make it dynamic, we have a page variable that we add within our state. And finally, once we have loaded some items from the server, we increment the page so that we load next time the next items from the server. Let's also go to the state and remove the items and instead we fetch then initially some data from the server. With this we load 25 items from the server. If we reach the end then we always load 25 more items of the server. If we load less than 25 items from the server we set a flag has more to false. Let's also create this flag within our state. And within the list view, instead of the circular progress indicator for the last item, we display then the text no more data to load. As a result, if we reach the end of the list and there's no more data on the server, then it displays no more data to load. Also add a is loading flag to your state. Within the fetch method, we make sure that if it is currently loading, we are not loading again. And if it is not loading, then we set the is loading flag to true. And when we have finished loading, then we set the is loading flag to false. With this, we make sure if the loading takes longer, that we only make one request at a time to the server. And finally, around the list view, we wrap a refresh indicator. Within the refresh method, we reset first of all the state, and then we load all the data, our items again. With this, you can also pull to refresh to make a server request for loading fresh data. Spread operator. How to insert a list of items into another list in Flutter. We have a list of items that we want to include into the other list between the item 1 and item 4. Normally you would use a column that references these list of items. 
With this, item 2 and 3 are added to the list. Alternatively, you can use the list spread operator, simply use three dots followed by the list reference. This will also place item 2 and 3 into our list, so think of it as if you have directly put the items inside of the list. Nested columns and list views. How to use a scrollable list view inside a column widget in Flutter. If you place in a not scrollable column a scrollable list view, then you get this vertical viewport was given unbounded height arrow. To fix this, you need to give your list view a limited height, which takes by default an infinite height. With this, all items are displayed. However, if all the items expand the available space, then you get a render overflow arrow. To fix this, simply wrap the list view inside of a flexible widget. With this, the items take the space that they need on the screen. Also, if you have more items, then the list is scrollable. Alternatively to the flexible widget, you can also use the expanded widget. With this, your items will always take the whole remaining vertical space. Also, if you have less items, the expanded widget will take the whole available space. And finally, instead of the expanded widget, you can give your list view also a specific fixed height. As a result, the items are only scrollable inside of this limited space. Let's also go back to the expanded list view example. Here you can only scroll the list view and the red container at the top is not scrolled. In case you want to scroll every widget inside the column, then make sure to remove the expanded widgets first of all, and around the column we wrap then a single child scroll view widget. With this, the column is scrollable and the list view is also scrollable and this doesn't work, therefore you also need to deactivate the scrolling inside the list view. As a result, all the widgets inside the column are scrollable and also the top is scrollable. Alternatively to the scrollable column, you can also directly take a scrollable list view. Single child scroll view. How to make a single widget scrollable in Flutter. Inside a column or row widget, make sure to remove all the flexible widgets and expanded widgets. If you get now an overflow because the column has not enough space to display all the items, then simply wrap a single child scroll view around the column. With this, all widgets in the column are scrollable. Next, to make a row scrollable, you need to wrap the single child scroll view around and also set the scroll direction to horizontal. With this, all the row widgets are scrollable horizontally. The main advantage is that the column is not scrollable if all the widgets fit on the screen. However, if our screen dimension changes, then also our column is scrollable so that all items can be displayed. And finally, the expanded, flexible and main axis alignment space work properly inside a column. However, if you wrap a single child scroll view around, then the main axis alignment space will be ignored. Or if you use an expanded or flexible widget, then you get a layout error and nothing is displayed on the screen. Simply wrap a layout builder around the single child scroll view and around the column you wrap then a constraint box with the constraints that you get from the layout builder and also an intrinsic height widget. As a result, you can use the main axis alignment space inside a scrollable column. Once the space is not available, then the column is scrollable. Also, the expanded and flexible widgets work properly inside the scrollable column. Once we reach the fixed height of the widgets, then our column is scrollable. Finally, the scrollable column renders all widgets on the screen. If you have a lot of items, use a list view builder instead, so that only the widgets that are currently displayed on the screen are rendered. List view with JSON data. How to fetch JSON data from a server or from the assets phone storage. Simply create a list of users. Within the getUsers method, we define some JSON data. So we have here a list of users and each single user has a username, an email and an image. Next, we convert this JSON data list to a list of users by calling the fromJSON method on your user model class. So I have created a separate user class. Inside of it, we create this from JSON method that takes the JSON and converts it to a user object. So we access from the JSON data the username, the email and also this image and place it inside of a user object. With this, we have converted this JSON data to a list of users. And finally, we want to display these users within the build method by creating a list view. 
Inside the list view, we access each user and create for each user a card with a title, the subtitle, and also the leading image. And lastly, you can load this JSON data from a server or from your assets. Simply change the header by returning a future. And also here we have then a future type. Next, we load this JSON data then instead from a server using the HTTP package. So here this link contains then our JSON data. Alternatively, you can load this JSON data from your assets folder. Whereas we place then this JSON inside of this JSON file. Also make sure to go to your pubspec yaml file and below the flutter tag at your assets folder. All right, once we have loaded this JSON data from our assets folder, or in this case from the server, then we also want to display this new users future in our UI. So around our build users method, we wrap a future builder. And finally, over the snapshot data, we can access the users once they are loaded from the server or from the assets folder. Also show a loading indicator while loading the data from the server and an error message if the loading failed. Sticky header. How to add sticky headers to a scrollable list view? We create a list view with some items. Next, we wrap a sticky header around each item, which comes from the sticky headers package. And then on top of each item, we create this header. With this, the current sticky header is always displayed at the top of the list view. Optionally, replace the sticky header by the sticky header builder. And then you could use the stuck amount to create an animated header. As a result, if you scroll to the top, the gray header always animates to the red header. Also, you could animate between transparent colors. To make the transparency work, the sticky header needs to overlap the list items. As a result, each header is half visible. If we scroll the header towards the top, it always becomes fully visible. Search and filter list view. How to filter a list view using a search text field in Flutter. Let's start with a search text field. Inside the search text field, we want to search for books that have a title and an image. And therefore I create a list of books and I put here three different books inside. Next, back in the main file, we want to create in our state this list of books. And we also want to display under our search bar a list view. And inside of this list view, we want to display each of the books in a list tile. So we display an image and also the text, our book title. And finally, we want to filter the books depending on the search input. Therefore, let's go back to the search text field. And every time if we change anything in our field, then we want to call the search book method. And with this, we get every time the query of our search text field. And lastly, we take then all of the books and filter each of the books. And then we basically check if the book title contains our search input. Let's also put the suggestions back into our state, into our books variable. With this, we can search for a book title and the list below is always filtered based on the search input. And finally, if we click on one of the books, then we want to navigate to a new page, the book page and put the book on which we have clicked inside. Within this book page, we display within the app bar the book title and within the scaffold body property, we display the image. With this, we can click on one of the books and we navigate to a new page where we display the book title and the book image. Reordable list view. How to reorder items in a list view by drag and drop in Flutter. Simply replace the list view that displays some items by a reordable list view. Next, add to each of your list items a value key so that the reordable list view can identify these items. With this, we can long press on an item, drag it around within the list, and if we drop it, then the on reorder callback is called. Inside this callback, we remove the item from the old position and put it to the new position inside our list. Also add this line at the beginning. As a result, we can drag and drop the items within the list and the list is always updated. List view with navigator. How to navigate from a list view item to another detail screen. Simply create a list view and place a card inside. With this, we have a title, a subtitle and a trailing icon. Also add a leading image. Next, let's make it more dynamic by creating a user class with a username, email and image. Within our state, we create a list of users and then we create one user with this username, email and this image. 
Also, let's add some more users to our list. And lastly, we display then the users within our list view. We get each individual user and then we exchange our information. So we display the image, then also the username and the email. With this, we have a beautiful list view with different users. And lastly, within the list tile, you have the on-tap handler and we navigate then to a new page, a user page and put our current selected user inside. Let's also go to this user page. Firstly, we get our user in our constructor and within the build method, we have a scaffold where we display then the image and user information. With this, we can tap on any user and then we go to the detail page and we can also scroll down and click on another user and go to this detail page. Horizontal list view. How to scroll widgets horizontally in Flutter. Let's start with the row that has two cards inside. If we place more cards inside, then we get an overflow error on the right side, since the width of all widgets is bigger than the screen width. Simply wrap around your row a single child scroll view. With this, we have no overflow error and we can scroll horizontally between the widgets. The single child scroll view renders all of its widgets, no matter if they are displayed on the screen or not. And the same is also for a list view, it also renders all of its widgets, even if they are not displayed on the screen. Instead, use a list view builder if you have to display many widgets. With this, only the widgets that are currently displayed on the screen are rendered, which then improves the performance of your application. Alternatively, use the list view separated to add some space between the widgets. As you notice, a list view always takes the whole space available to the bottom. Therefore, you need to wrap around your list view a size box and define the height of each of your widgets. And finally, we only need to improve the design of our cards. Vertical list view. How to scroll widgets vertically in Flutter. We start with a column that displays three cards under each other. If we add some more cards, then we get an overflow error at the bottom. This happens because the screen height is limited and not all widgets can be displayed on the screen. Simply wrap around the column a single child scroll view. With this, all column children widgets are vertically scrollable. Notice that the single child scroll view is rendering all of its children widgets even if they are not displayed on the screen. Instead of a scrollable column, you could use a vertical scrollable list view. However, here we have the same problem. The list view is rendering all its children widgets, which can lead to a bad performance if you have a lot of children widgets. Therefore, use instead a list view builder. With this, only these four widgets that are displayed on the screen are rendered and the remaining 96 items are not rendered. And finally, instead of a builder, you can also use a separated widget to add some spacing between all widgets. Also optionally change the design of your card. Grouped list view. How to create groups of items in a list view in Flutter. We create a list of elements. Each element has a group and a name. Also, let's add some more elements to this list. And now we can use the elements to create a group list view, which comes from the group list package. Inside the item builder, we create each element as a card. Next to displaying the name of each element, we group each element by the group data field. The value that is returned by the group by function goes into the group separator builder. And lastly, we use this value to build the header for each group. With this, all the list elements are categorized into different groups. By default, the group header is displayed above its items. Simply set the sticky group property to true to make the current visible group stick to the top. Next, to sort all the list items of each group alphabetically, you can set the item comparator. Also use the group comparator to change the order of your groups, in this case in a descending order.